Hey, Boomerhauer back here. Um, so in this video, I just wanted to discuss some different strategies of buildings around the sanctuary. Some of these are small buildings, um, but I figured I could just cover everything kind of in one video. Um, so let's start with the ruins tower that's on the upper left here. Um, first thing in here is the auto select does a terrible job of picking heroes. So if you look at this, I'll show you an example here. So this is not auto selected. Uh, these are heroes that I selected. So let's take a look here. So we have about 37,700 casualties when we do this. Let's see what happens when we auto select. Well, <laughs> let's actually try auto selecting. Quick select. So we have uh, about 95,000 casualties when we auto select. So why is that? Um, I don't know how it auto selects. It probably goes by might. Um, but the problem is, well, let's look at a frame, for example. So a frame at plus seven, he gives your shooters 150% boost. So if you compare that to a troop hero instead, like Requiem, who's one I use here, uh, she gives 51.2%. So the issue here is you have four different troop types here. Um, so you really want to think about this, like multiply this number by four. Um, so she's essentially giving a little over 200% benefit uh, to all four troop types, because all four of them get this, um, whereas the frame only benefits shooters. So 200 and something percent is better than 150%, um, because nobody except shooters benefits from a frame so in general when you do these hero challenges in here um, or anything involving heroes like the uh, ultimate challenge stage um, you want to pick heroes that um, have troop boosts so I'll show you how I select mine so the fighter ones um, that's a little bit different situation because fighters are um, the first priority in the casualty order. So they're kind of on the front lines and they're the first ones that do damage and take damage. And uh, fighters are kind of unfairly strong and benefited in ruins. Um, so if you have good fighter heroes, you want to put them in there. Um, the other ones I've tried experimenting with Fox with a frame, um, they don't do very well in here. Um, so you want to use strong troop boost heroes and Myers. Yeah, that's my actual lineup. Uh, otherwise in ruins, like the weapons, um, maybe there aren't that many people that do what I do, but Phoenix, I leave an uh, radar on her because it's really high rarity. Um, and it's stronger than the incinerator that I have for her, which I leave here. Um, if I'm doing an event where I need my shooter march, I will switch out the incinerator to go on Phoenix because it gives, you know, extra shooter stats. But otherwise, I leave the radar on there for arena purposes. So if you, if you also do something like that, just make sure to switch your weapons to the hero-specific, you know, the appropriate for that weapon before you do the ruins tower because it'll benefit you. Uh, the other stages in here don't really have too much strategy. It's just kind of, you know, if you upgrade your gear or your cubes or modules, if you upgrade stuff evenly, you're going to do better in here. Um, if you have really, really good fighter modules, but crappy shooter and rider modules, you're not going to do as well in here. Um, so stuff like that is a consideration. So I, I kind of balance that, like the Nova... Uh, Nova, I kind of balance, um, one thing, uh, well, let's skip over to Nova. Um, so I got a recommendation from somebody who is really good at this game to upgrade everything to level 18. So that's what I've done. Everything is at least level 18 because of the benefit in ruins. And then after that, get the troop size maxed out 
Um, a good place to get Nova Mill is actually in the Diamond Exchange Shop, which happens um, every four weeks now because they have that Scorched Earth event um, every two weeks that the uh, Diamond Exchange Shop is not running. Um, so get everything to level 18 and then max out the troop size because that's valuable and then max out your primary attack, um, which for me is fighter attack. So I'm going to get fighter attack to level 30 and then we'll see what I work on after that. Maybe it'll be fighter HP. Maybe it'll be some of these troop things. Um, for Nova, the key thing you need to know is what these three buttons here do in the middle. Um, there's affinity, praise, and gift. You basically always want to click on praise. Um, so these three buttons give you different things. Uh, the affinity gives you Nova experience. So those blue Nova things that you can redeem in your bag for Nova experience. The praise gives you Nova econ and mill points that go up in your bag and then you can open them. Uh, and the gift gives you something random, uh, like a speed up or something like that. Um, so Nova econ and mill, especially the mill, are pretty hard to come by. Um, so you want to use the praise because uh, it's a good source of Nova Mill. Uh, going over here to the tavern, there's not a lot to discuss here. Um, these you see these three cards at the bottom of the of each of these. If you click on those, if you just need a reminder of who is actually available here, um, you can kind of click through that. So for like the five star, um, notice not all the heroes are in here. Um, you cannot recruit a frame in here. You can't recruit uh, a recruit Requiem. Uh, there are a couple that you can't recruit in here. Um, so if you're using five star choice cards or you know something else, just keep in mind who you can and can't get in here. Um, and also whenever you're in here, always use the nine coins at a time to recruit 10 because it gives you a free coin um, I'm out of points right now because I used or out of coins right now because I just used all of them because we're in a hero frag event today um, the exchange part um, yeah eventually you'll finish off the four star and three star heroes um, so you'll want to come up here to the four or the five star um, so right now I'm working on requiem uh, until she gets to plus seven. Um, so whenever I have more than a thousand points, I'll pick up Requiem Frags. And then after she's done, I'll probably go back to Ulrich until he's plus eight. Um, but yeah, just keep in mind the four that you can actually use the points for. So if you open, say like this event today, you open a bunch of four-star hero choice cards and you can recycle all that. Um, then... Um, in, if you need like 50 frags to get Fox to the next level or something, maybe you can get 15 or 20 of those frags here by exchanging. And then you only need to use, you know, a lesser number of, uh, of five star choice cards afterwards. Um, whereas a hero like uh, Mars, you can't exchange here. So you have to either recruit him or use five star cards. Um, so just try to keep that in mind, how you can actually get these heroes uh, enhanced um, by five star cards, by recruiting, and also by this exchange. Uh, next building, the quiz tower. Um, eventually, if you play this game long enough, you're going to memorize all the right answers. Um, so there's not a whole lot to say here. Just um, uh, also just just make sure you read the questions because some of these are pretty useful uh, information like the casualty order one and a couple other ones um, yeah just try to read the question and make sure you understand what it's asking because um, uh, strategy wise some of these can help you uh, the bank so the bank uh, the auction is a ripoff don't ever use this um, they give you these uh, design boxes which most of the time are going to give you a common weapon which is crap uh, in a real ripoff uh, you go over here to the rare design boxes they're going to be extremely overpriced um, like a rare death claw for 950,000 gems which is going to be higher than that by the time this closes um, that's what about uh uh, 
$3,200 of real money to get that many diamonds. Um, do you want to spend that much on one weapon, even if it's good? Probably not, um, especially if it's just a rare. So I would not recommend Auction House. Um, I, I've won, I don't know, three or four things in here before I knew better. Um, don't bid on stuff in here. Um, get weapons by other means. The deposit, on the other hand, um, if you've ever purchased something in this game, you want to be using the one-day deposit every 24 hours because it gives you 7%. So you can deposit 1,500 diamonds, get 1,605 back, so you get 105 free diamonds per day. Um, so again, you have to purchase something in this game, even if it's just a one-time $1 purchase to unlock this. Um, but once you do, use this every day because you'll get some extra diamonds. Mystery shop. Um, so mystery shop, uh, well, it looks like I've kind of unlocked a couple here. Um, so you'll see these yellow stars here. So I have a one star and a two star offer here. Um, the higher the star level, the better the value you're getting. Um, so usually if it's a three star offer, I'll take at least a really strong look at it, even if it's something I don't really want to buy, um, especially if I have to use gas or steel to buy it. Um, but yeah, the one star offers, be very careful about those. It has to be something that you really, that's obvious. Like if you can use, I don't know, 400,000 food to buy 450,000 food, where it's a clear, you're getting something out of it. Um, but here, 20,000 gas for three speed ups, I, it, I'm not interested in that. Um, and as you purchase some of these things, you're going to see some uh, 499 offer which you can click on the magnifying glass on that box to see what's included in there um, or you can purchase something with diamonds which the price of this this is 833 diamonds depending on the star level of that original offer the amount of diamonds the number of diamonds you'll have to spend will change um, a directed relocate so I think if this is a one star offer, the directed relocate costs 999 diamonds. So this was probably a two or three star offer originally when I purchased it because um, it's only 833 diamonds, not 999. Um, so that's the thing with the mystery shop. The, the only other time this building is relevant is during a Alliance showdown because you can select some, some tasks where you'll... Uh, need to do mystery shops to get some number of points um, 32 mystery shops or something over a few days you know to to get 175 points or something uh, gear factory so gear factory is mostly useful for the nano weapons um, you craft weapons in here I've discussed weapons in another video so I'm not going to go into that here um, you can always click on this cabinet at the bottom right if you want to see available weapons or the the usefulness in upgrading a certain weapon that you have like if you have a, a way to get a rare design box and you have an uncommon um, maybe you look at what a rare epic or apex that that weapon might give you um, you can kind of click through this and see how valuable those things might be to you um, also this chest on the upper right corner is a separate shop which is based on scraps of uh, weapons that you scrap. Um, I'll re refer you just to the weapons discussion video that I had because there's a lot that goes into this. Um, but yeah, the gear factory, uh, the level of your gear factory, so mine's currently level 35. You can click on this exclamation point right here. Uh, not that exclamation point. Uh, this exclamation point. What am I doing? Okay, material production, click on there, then click on that exclamation point. So 40 to 75, this is the number of parts that you'll craft every six hours. Um, so level up your gear factory, it's a good building, um, mostly because of this, because you're gonna get more uh, frags uh, or more parts every time you do that random uh, part crafting. Uh, also for the module, um, for a level 33 modules, you need your gear factory to be level 33. 
Um, so if you get up to HQ 33, the gear factory is going to be one of the first buildings you'll want to prioritize to equip this last set of modules. Um, if you spend money in the game, uh, the builder set and the research set to get these six star uh, uh, gear for those, you, you will need a level 35 gear factory, uh, not a level 35 HQ, a level 35 gear factory um, to do the promotion up to the six star of those. The Hall of War, um, the only thing that's useful here is the troop form sets. So you can set your march formations here, so your fighter march, your rider march, and your shooter march. Um, come in there and set them. What I would recommend is that, uh, what I like to do is I like to go use my mega march, um, so I have the larger march size, and then when that larger march size is active, I will go and save my march formations in the Hall of War, and that way that those marches work whenever I wanna use them whether it's the normal march size or the mega march size. Because if you save them as the normal march size and then you go mega marching in some event, um, you're gonna have to adjust the troop numbers every time. Uh, trading post is not an interesting building, so we don't need to discuss that. Um, only thing there, you can click on the exclamation point and you'll see that your transport tax generally decreases and your transported resources increase as you upgrade this. The supply depot is kind of an interesting uh, building. So these supply depot, depot coins, you get a, uh, some f you know free number of those every day, which depends on the level and also depends whether or not you have Scarlet's hero skin activated. Um, as you purchase these, the price uh, or, or the number of uh, like gas that you get with each interaction here goes up, but it will eventually reach a ceiling. Um, somewhere after like, I don't know, 15 or 20 coins that you use, extra coins in addition to your uh, free attempts, uh, it'll reach some maximum, which I think is like 17 or 1800 gas for me. Um, so after that point, it's not going to continue going up to like 3,000 or 4,000 gas. It'll reach a ceiling. Um, so that matters because you can get these coins in break loose events. So if you spend like, you know, 30 extra coins or something that you got from break loose, you're going to get that maximum number of gas every time. Uh, Trap Factory is garbage. Probably the worst building in the game. Um, there's not a ton to discuss here. There is a unit advantage. Um, bottom line here, reconcile this with your parade grounds to see which types of traps you want to build. Um, so the throwable traps are good against riders, which given that I'm fighter based, I'm likely to see a lot of riders. Um, so I primarily build traps that are good against riders, which are these. So your parade grounds, um, launch trap, arrow trap, terrain trap, you're going to see that uh, when you go in the parade grounds to see which type of trap you want to be building depending on what your base is weak against. Um, final building is the pit. Um, so the pit's also an interesting building. So what you want to do here is, um, yeah, sorry about that. So here, um, what I would recommend is when you get your, your building up to a pretty high level, what you can do is, uh, or your, uh, like this is a level seven field now. So you gain a lot of rare earth and at a pretty good rate. Um, so usually I get kicked out a lot though, especially cause there are a lot of riders around here. So Right now I have six hours and 30 minutes. If I'm down to like an hour or two, I might actually come in here and recall. So this red button on the upper, or kind of the middle upper left here, I may actually recall and then re-enter another pit just to avoid somebody kicking me out. Cause when you get kicked out, you do lose, um, you do lose rare earth. Um, and if I come, yeah, like this. So if you see the battle results when I got kicked out here, I lost 55,000 rare earth. So if I had pulled out before I got kicked, I would have saved the 55,000 extra rare earth, which seems good. 
So sometimes you can avenge these losses. Um, I don't think I've avenged any recently, but if you click avenge, you'll see some of these I do successfully revenge. Like if it's a rider that just barely beats me, my shooters can usually beat that rider. Um, so occasionally you will be able to avenge some. So always check that. If you think you can avenge it, you should avenge it to recover the rare earth that you lost. And this shop is good, obviously, for module stuff, but also for resources. This is a good place to get resources. Uh, research lab. Um, yeah, I already talked about that. The other thing the research lab does, it's, it is a building you want to upgrade because the cost to upgrade all those Nova Mill and Econ things decreases as you upgrade this building. So this is one that you want to want to upgrade over time. Uh, similar to the, the watchtower, um, you'll notice after a point you start increasing troop damage, which is valuable. Um, so this is one that I do want to get up to 35 to match the HQ level soon enough. Okay, I think that covers a lot of the basics. Um, a quick look around the base and also a couple tips uh, for each of these buildings around here.